So Creality is coming out with an all new laser, the Falcon A1 Pro on August 5th. And honestly, it's left a lot of people wondering what's the difference between the A1 and the A1 Pro because they look just alike, almost. Now, if you already have the A1, should you upgrade to the A1 Pro? And if you don't have either one, should you get the A1 or the A1 Pro? So in this video, we're gonna go over the features and the differences between the A1 and the A1 Pro, and I'll try to help you determine which laser is best for you, if any. Now, before we get into the review, let me tell you about the giveaway. I'm giving away an Algo Laser Pixie 5 watt. Algo Laser sent out their all new laser to us a few months ago and we checked it out and I'm giving it away to you guys. All you have to do is click on the Discord server in the description, go on over to Discord, it's free to join, join the giveaway and wait for August 22nd and the Stay Ready bot in Discord will automatically pick a winner on that day and I'll announce it in the Discord. That's it. And as long as you're a Discord member, you'll always stay up to date with all the giveaways we're doing. It announces the winners, everything. I mean, you won't miss a thing, so you can't lose. So one of the first things that you'll notice on the A1 Pro is this touchscreen. So this is gonna be one of the biggest features that sets this apart from the A1. But there's actually several differences between the A1 and the Pro series, like this 20 watt diode laser. Another difference, you got a 2 watt infrared laser as well. And also, the way they mount is a lot different. Now, changing the laser out is a lot easier and faster. This is a classic example of don't judge a book by its cover, because this thing looks just like the A1, but it's far from it. Now, I'll cover all these differences in detail, but real quick, let me tell you about a really cool feature with this new 20 watt laser. It has autofocusing. And what that allows you to do is basically put your material inside the machine, press autofocus, you're done. And like any other laser, it has a mediocre camera, but nonetheless, it has a camera. Now with that camera, what you get is auto material detection and the ability to place your object on the material in the computer and just basically hit print and it prints wherever it is on the camera. Now there's actually a feature that the A1 and the A1 Pro both share, and that's the Creality Falcon app. The Creality Falcon app is actually huge because it allows you to control the laser remotely, get notifications, look up models, print models, and monitor your print while you're not around the laser, which I have to say, you shouldn't be using the laser if you're not around, but let's say you need to go to the restroom, step out with the kids, whatever the case may be, and it also has the flame detection, so if there's any issues, the app is going to notify you. Now, they both operate off of Creality's Falcon software, and it's not incredibly hard to use. It's actually fairly simple, but it's not packed with features like Lightburn, but honestly, I've found that that makes it actually easier to use. Okay, so that was the A1 Pro versus the A1 in a nutshell. So now let's go over the A1 Pro in a little more detail. So back to the touch screen right here the a1 did not have a screen whatsoever now the a1 pro has this little four four by three touch screen it's about the size of the touch screen on the k1 max series or the k2 plus printer if you have one of those so what can the touch screen do does it eliminate the need for a laptop altogether and my answer to that is no i still feel like you need a laptop because you still need to get into the creality falcon software and bring up the software to be able to manipulate your files and do all the intricate things that you need to do. You're not gonna be able to do that here on this touch screen. Now, this will get you out of a jam to, you know, to stop the printer, to, if you wanted to plug in the USB and bring in files and use the touch screen like that. If your printer throws an error, you don't have to walk over to the computer. You can check it out right here as well. And then you can do your updates and connect to your Wi-Fi, all of that right here on the touch screen. So it is pretty handy, but that's definitely not gonna be the biggest feature of the A1 Pro. Hey, real quick, I need you to do three things for me. Hit like, share this with somebody who you think might like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. That's what keeps us going, able to do giveaways and videos for you. So don't wait, hit the like, subscribe, share, and back to the video. Now it has several breakthrough features, but let's talk about my favorite. Now my favorite is gonna be the 20 watt to the two watt infrared laser swap and how easy it is to do. So to swap out the lasers, you simply need to release the locking mechanism lift up on this little cable right here and then lift up on the laser and it's out and to install the two watt you just do it in reverse slide it down clip in the cable lock it down and you're ready to go now that brings us to another one of these breakthrough features with this machine is auto focusing after you've installed the laser let's say you got the two watt in you're ready to go now you need to focus the laser typically before we would use the little metal step piece we would put it under the laser 
unscrew the screws, lower it down, lock it in, and then go check, make sure everything's good. Well, now you don't even need to do that. All you have to do, install your laser, go over to the machine. You can either do it here on the touch screen or you can do it on your PC. However you wanna do it, hit autofocus and you're ready to go. So that feature combined with the 20 watt, two watt infrared, are my two most favorite features. Now a key feature that the A1 Pro shares with the A1 is auto material detection. The A1 had that feature, they brought that over into the A1 Pro of course, and you'll be able to just put your material inside and it will auto detect the material using Creality's material QR codes. You just slip it in there and it recognizes it. It does your settings for you and you're off to the races. Now, I don't rely on that 100%, although you can, I still go in and if I feel like there's adjustments that need to be made for my specific project, then I do those. But in general, you don't need to mess with it. If you wanna cut, those preset settings are gonna cut and if you want to engrave those preset settings are gonna also engrave now all projects are different and if you have some specific look that you're going for the machine's not gonna know that and if you want a darker engraving or a lighter it's not gonna know any of that in that situation you'll want to go in there and adjust your settings accordingly now let's talk a little bit about the lasers real quick now I know you're thinking 20 watt it's a lot more power it's better than the 10 watt a1 well Yes and no, because with a 20 watt laser, anytime you go up with a diode laser, let's say you go from a 20 to a 40, you're gonna lose resolution. And what I mean by resolution is your laser line is gonna be thicker. So with a 10 watt laser, you can get a finer engraving and a little bit more detail. Now, is it gonna be noticeable? Slightly yes. With this 20 watt, I noticed the difference from the 10 watt in the thickness of the laser line and the engravings. Was it a deal killer? Absolutely not. But you need to take into consideration, do you need the extra power? If you need the extra power for cutting, then you need to grab the 20 watt. If you're not gonna do a lot of cutting and you're mostly engraving, then the 10 watts more than enough and you wouldn't wanna sacrifice that 10 or 15% or maybe even 20% in resolution for a higher wattage laser if you don't need the extra wattage. So you might as well get the 10 if you're gonna do mainly engraving. So where does the two watt infrared come in at? Well, the two watt infrared kind of picks up the slack from the 20 watt diode in that it can actually laser on materials a little bit better than the 20 watt. Where the 20 watt can't really do certain metals that well, the two watt infrared can. So they're kind of a perfect pair together because with the 20 watt, you're gonna be able to get all types of engravings and you're gonna be able to cut. And with the two watt infrared, for those certain metals that the 20 watt just cannot do very well, the two watt will pick up the slack. So if you're gonna get the A1 Pro, I would just go ahead and get the 20 watt with the infrared laser for sure. So the A1 Pro does come with air assist just like the A1 did. And you'll be able to do your cuttings with air assist, which allows for less scarring on the material and it clears the debris for the laser to cut smoothly. And one thing I like that Creality did with their air pumps is it just plugs directly into the laser. You don't have to have another plug to go to another outlet like some other lasers. So while we're talking about the side of the machine, right here on the side, you've got your off and on switch, you have uh, two type C ports, the air inlet, and then you've got the rotary kit input, and then you've got the key right here if you wanna lock it out so no one else can use it. And then of course you have your power input. And over here you have the emergency button and then your screen. So they kind of just put everything all on one side, which I like that. Okay, let's talk about materials briefly. So online they say that the A1 Pro can do up to 350 different materials. Now obviously I couldn't test near that many, but I can tell you it does regular wood, basswood, plywood, pretty much any type of wood that you wanna do this thing can handle. You're gonna be able to do metals, and the engraving that the blue diode laser can't handle, the infrared laser can. And you can even do colors on metals like stainless steel. But when you're playing with temperatures and whatnot, you can get full color engravings on stainless steel and some other metals. You're also gonna be able to do acrylics. Now you're not gonna be able to do clear acrylic without doing some type of modifications like masking spray or whatnot, but that's with any diode laser. And the same would be if you wanted to do glass. Yes, you can do glass on this machine, but again, you're gonna have to do some slight modifications to get the laser to be able to do it on the clear material. And if you're gonna be doing glasses and mugs and all that stuff, you're gonna need this guy right here, the rotary kit. This is the pro kit. You don't have to get the pro kit. Any of the Creality rotary machines will work and this plugs directly into the side. You don't have a separate power cable, just like the air pump. Just like the A1, you're gonna need the extension legs for the bottom of this to lift it up, but you can get that on the website as well. And once you have those two things, you'll be ready to go to be able to laser onto cylinder objects. Now to use the rotary kit, if you'll look inside right here, you see this honeycomb right here. 
Now, I'm not sure if all of them come with the honeycomb. Mine did because it's a review unit, but I would look on the website just to make sure. But you'll take out the honeycomb and then there'll be a few screws to take out the bottom plate of the printer. And then you just simply screw on the legs on one on each corner. And it basically raises up the laser to allow you the room to be able to use the rotary kit. And honestly, with the A1 Pro, I'm so glad that they brought back this front door right here and that they basically just kept this whole design. Uh, with the lid lifting up like that and the camera mounted on top, it's actually zero assembly when you get this thing. Literally, all I did was attach the screen, plug it in, and remove all the foam from the inside, and it was ready to go. I hooked it up to the Creality Falcon software, and then I turned on the app, everything linked up. I, I mean, yeah, you're ready to go in like 10 minutes, literally. So I know throughout the video, you've been seeing this hose right here come to the back. I don't have mine ran out the window, but let's talk about that. <laughs> So the other day, I put a model in here, it was ready to go, I started cutting it, it was like a box that I was gonna assemble, it was cutting, everything was good, I wasn't really paying attention because I have this hooked up to the Creality Fume Extractor. And it's the new Creality Fume Extractor, the little small one. And before you know it, smoke alarms were going off everywhere. It was crazy. And I mean, when you're in it, you don't really see it. But then I took a step back and I looked around and the whole room was full of smoke. Yeah, so I guess the Fume Extractor wasn't keeping up because it was on low. And honestly, when I put it on high, <laughs> I still had to stop the machine because I was absolutely getting smoke inside the studio and yeah, it was a lot. It was enough to set off my smoke detector. So I would highly suggest either getting a bigger fume extractor for this machine. I have one and that's the one that I'll probably use when I'm cutting. Now when you're engraving, I think that the small one will work out great. But when you're doing a big cut, uh, I just don't think it can keep up. Maybe it was a one off for me. I don't know. But for me, it was a fail. So for now, I'm gonna use my big fume extractor for indoor, or if it gets too crazy, I might just, you know, pump it out the window. Now the Pro does come with this hose right here. So if you don't have a fume extractor, you'll just simply pipe it out the window, block off the window and the gap and all that good stuff, and you'll be fine. Now you, you are gonna get a little bit of residual smell inside. You're not gonna escape every little piece of smoke that comes out of the machine. Uh, now, if you pipe it outside, then you'll be fine. You won't have a smoke in your room for sure. Well, hopefully this video helps you decide whether the A1 Pro is right for you. And actually right now is the best time to get one if you're gonna get it because from August the 5th to the 6th, Creality is doing 40% off 200 units. And that is an absolute steal for this unit. Now, if you missed that, August the 6th to the 8th, they're doing 30% off for 400 units. And if you missed both of those, then you have August the 8th to the 18th, they're doing 20% off 600 units. So either way, if you hit any of those sales, I mean, you're winning and it's a great deal. That's all I got for you in this video. So until next time, stay ready to 3D print. See you next time.